Long before diode laser technology existed in the form of handheld laser pointers, gas lasers were the only commercially available laser source with a continuous visible output. Similar to neon signs in construction, gas lasers featured an electrically excited gas between a pair of opposing mirrors. Being light amplifiers, continuous visible output gas lasers required the mirrors for optical feedback. In most commercial gas lasers, the mirrors are permanently fabricated directly onto the ends of the laser tube. With a few exceptions, however, one or both mirrors are replaced with a window to enable the use of external resonator mirrors. The windows are positioned at an angle called the Brewster's Angle to minimize reflective losses. The resulting arrangement enables experimentation by providing access to the optical cavity and user choice of mirrors. Laser light undergoing amplification is trapped, so to speak, between the resonator mirrors. A tiny fraction of this light is passed through one of the mirrors and becomes the usable laser output. With one or both mirrors being separate from the laser tube, however, the intercavity beam is powerful enough to produce a visible path in air without the need for artificial smoke. The powerful intercavity beam is a needle-like line of red, sparkly laser light. The appearance of the beam is more vivid and interesting when photographed. Some beam photographs will be shown later in this video. Here is what the laser looks like from the rear. In addition to having a cavity that extends beyond the laser tube, this laser also has another interesting and relatively unusual feature. The tube, or plasma bore, is wider than what is typically used for this type of laser. The result is that this laser has multiple transverse modes, or paths, that the amplified laser light takes between the two resonator mirrors. Instead of a round spot that's brightest in the center and fades in intensity towards its border, the beam profile from this laser contains distinct patterns that can change over time or with adjustments to the resonator mirrors. Through careful adjustment, I was able to align an external output mirror using a makeshift mount from clothespins. Very subtle movements make a big difference in the effects of mirror alignment. For mirrors that are properly mounted, this isn't generally a problem. But for this makeshift output coupler, even a small force upon the table can make a difference between a working and non-working laser. And the difference that the amount, or even the absence or presence of this force makes, can change over time during laser operation. Notice how the intensity of the beam changes as the jar of coins is moved. And finally, as promised, here are some pictures I made of the beam in a darkened room. No artificial smoke was used to make these photos. These photographs were made with my iPhone camera. The relatively long distance between the output window and output coupler, along with the powerful, needle-thin intercavity laser beam, provides an unusually interesting display.